Hey guys, Captain JJB84. Um, maybe some of you are wondering, well, aren't you gonna review Tron Legacy? I did tell a few people I was, but I gotta reshoot that review because I didn't like what I did with it. <laughs> but we're gonna review 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now you're probably wondering, wait a minute, that came out in 1968. Do you have a time traveling car? No one, no. For all those who live in Toronto, um, there's this theater called the Bell Lightbox Theater, and they're playing some old movies. And one of them was 2001, A Space Odyssey. And well, let's dive into the review. Okay, um, I'm gonna take this review a bit differently. I, I don't know how to go about this movie a bunch. Like, to be fair, I did watch uh, Confused Matthew, for all those who know him. I did watch his, uh, review on it, and I, I kind of, I kind of agreed with him on some things, but disagreed with him on other things, but this movie, I'm a little mixed about it, um, there are things I really do like about it, and there are things that, you know, I'm just like, come on, get this over with, but for the most part, it's not a bad movie, I like it, um, it's not the best movie I've ever seen, I see the I can see why people like it a lot, but, you know, this is just an opinion. As long as opinion's valid, then good, I guess. But, it's difficult for me to say. Um, uh, let's start with some of the problems, I guess. Um, let's see. I do like the special effects. The special effects are really nice. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I do like the music as well, you know, they got the, they got the nice music in there, mm-hmm, okay, and all the various scenes, um, what else do I like about it? I do like, uh, the way, I do like the way some of the characters, I guess, are, um, portrayed a bit, uh, you know, there's not really a lot of characters. Um, hmm, what else do I like? Uh, I like HAL 9000. He is cool. He's good. Scary as well. Um, yep, yeah, pretty much. Uh, hmm, what else do I like about this movie? Well, okay, well, now that we've covered the good things, let's cover the bad things. Well, to start off, it's... At first, it just begins with landscape. You know, I know it's the dawn of man, I know there's not much happening, but... Couldn't you just have, like, two shots of landscape, then get to the monkeys? I don't know. Um, I, uh, while I was at the theater, there had this, um... It's not like a regular theater, it's a really fancy movie theater. Um, they had a, uh... They had Roger Ebert's 1968 review of the film, and, um, read it, and some things I agree with, some things I disagree with. But, the things I don't like is that there's a lot of nothing happening. Like, the movie is about something. Well, some will disagree, some will agree. But, for the most part, there's not really a lot happening in the movie. I mean, the, like, even after we get out to the monkey scenes, we got around for, like, six minutes just watching, like, ships and space stations float around through space. There's nothing wrong with that, but is there a purpose? Please? Explain, movie! Explain! Now, to be fair, it is slightly explained, but... Kind of, but... Yeah. Um. Uh, this movie did scare me a bit at times. Um, like, it's not supposed to be a horror. Like, for all those who watch the Confused Matthew response to Chase's response, um, Chase says this is a horror movie. It's supposed to have be a bit of a horror movie. I have to slightly agree, but not agree. Um. <laughs> Uh, but, 
there are, yeah, there are scenes that really do scare the shit out of me at times. One is this weird music that sounds like it comes from like a vuvuzela or something. Like sounds like a bunch of bees. Comes around when the monoliths are. Um, and uh, one is um, when Hal kills Frank. It's not even shown. It's just Hal takes over the pod and throws Frank halfway across. Whatever, you see. And Frank dies of asphyxiation. Yeah, that's nice. The little robot can't make mistakes. He's killing people. <clears throat> then when Hal kills the other three uh, cryogenically. And then, um... I did like the music, yeah. Um, and then, uh... Hal himself just scared the shit out of me because I don't like, what's he thinking? He, he's reading my lip movements. He's probably gonna kill me or something. Um, but yeah, he's intimidating. I can't really say he's a villain though because we're not really given a main character. You know, we're not, Dave Bowman's the main star, but, I mean, Dave Bowman's the main character, I guess, but we don't get to see him for a while. I'd say the last half of this movie is actually pretty good. Um, the one I saw was two and a half hours. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, just liked it. Um, but, yeah, there's one scene where they're flying the ship to Clavius. So you just... It's five minutes of just the ship flying to Clavius. Come on, what do you need? But, yeah. Um, the minimal use of dialogue does get annoying, and the overuse of music... Of, uh, uh, seemingly the same music again and again. Just, you know, like, it's nice to listen to, but, you know, do something a little different. But, to be fair, Stanley Kubrick, he's an amazing director. But here's the thing, though. This was a novelization and like a book by Arthur C. Clarke, but for a screenplay or a script, how much did he have to write? Because you like maybe for the opening bit, you know, like landscape this, shot of this, and like the monkeys do this, they discover weapons, the monolith. But I'm curious how long the script was for this movie, because I could pretty much write like maybe five pages of script, and that'd be the movie. And yeah. Um, Stanley Kubrick, you know, he was an amazing director, I'll give him that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it is a bit sad to hear that this is the only movie he ever won an award for, and that was for the visual effects. Pretty much the lowest of all awards. Maybe, but... Yeah. Um, but... It's not a bad movie. I like it. It just, it's not so much as nothing's happening, there is stuff happening, but it's just, it takes so long for stuff to happen. And uh, Roger Ebert said in his review, when, when we're introduced to Hal, only then does a plot begin. That is true. And probably gonna go at me all like, oh, Hal killed the, Hal killed the... Like, I've seen a gazillion websites, reasons, even stuff on Wikipedia that says... Um, why, uh, Hal did this stuff. Um, like on Wikipedia, it's just a huge page. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I have to sit down and watch the sequel, though, 2010. His Confused Matthew said something good about it, so I'll watch it. But this movie, I'm mixed about it. It has its moments. I do like it. And, but, I wouldn't say, you know, me personally, I wouldn't say it's the top 10 movies of all time. I'd say it's in somewhere in the top 100 movies of all time. Top 20, yeah, top 20. Yeah, that's even better. I'd put it at a, maybe a number 11 spot or something. It's, it's pretty good. I mean, you know, for a movie that... It's essentially something of a new creation, like, um, you know, like, not having much of a plot or anything. It really does work well. I mean, I can see why it's respected for that. But at the same time, I don't see why, because, to be fair, not necessarily a remake, but if a movie was done like this, where they don't have much of a, a beginning, middle, or end, like, well, they do have a beginning, middle, end, but... 
Um, but not, not necessarily like a standard brick plot, but that would be shunned for it. Like if someone made a movie similar to the way this was made, or the way this movie works. Not necessarily a remake, but I wouldn't mind a remake, actually. That'd be cool, though, to have, like, I don't know. I've heard some things, you know, they're going to have, like, uh, Tom Hanks, Dave, I guess. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I liked it. Um, I have to give it a... I don't know, I'm a little mixed on my rating. Maybe a 7.5 out of 10. Because, you know, I was expect... Like, I went into this a little skeptical, but also a little optimistic thinking, you know, maybe it's not what I think it is. Like, I was, I've, I've seen this movie many... I've seen this movie... This is the third time... This is the second time I've ever seen it. The first time was a few years ago. And looking back on it, like, the first time I saw it, I was amazed by it, because it was really cool looking. I was like, I don't know, 11, 12 maybe? Looking at it at an age of 16, I realized, you know, maybe... Hmm, doesn't seem to work quite as well. It does work well with this philosophical evolution of man thing. It is. It does really just go back to where man began. Um, but... You know, it'd be nice to have a bit a bit more developed story, I guess. Or just a bit more of a story in general. And, um, one thing I'm very curious of is that when the movie was released in the premiere, April 2nd, 1968, uh, it was actually, Kubrick had to edit a good, like, 20-something minutes out of it. 29 minutes, if you're curious. But which of uh, like I don't know another ship docking at another station or something, which makes me wonder why like if you're just gonna edit out something, why not edit out a lot of other stuff or something? I don't know. But for the most part, I think the I think the best part about this movie is the music, the special effects, and I think the last half of the last like half of the movie is also really good. But um. This is much in the story. There's not really much of a story anyway. But it's good for what it's worth. If you check if you want to check it, check it out. So yeah, a seven and a half out of ten. Um But, you know, I like it. I mean Maybe I'll watch it again sometime in the future, but you know, it's nice. You all have a good day. This has been a captain's review, I guess. It's gonna get a seven and a half out of ten, so see you guys later.